um, for Steele before we play, because we'll have chances as well after you get a chance to play. This might be too far in the weeds, and if so, we can revisit it later, but okay, you publish the Portuguese textbook, you, you've got it in Mobi and EPUB. What is what happens to the H5P multimedia content when you go to those formats? Does it remove it? Generally, it does not display within the the specific book format. Um, EPUB 3 is supposed to be able to include interactivity in its specification. The, the makers of the readers that support EPUB 3 have yet implemented the spec. It's kind of like the old days of internet browsers where uh, HTML, the, the, the language could do stuff that browsers couldn't do and then browsers caught up. I think something similar will happen with e-readers eventually, but it's still very young in that technology. So interactivity does not uh, the H5P modules do not function inside of the format wrappers. It only functions on the web right now. Yes? Did I miss if they're, we're building an L, or thinking about an LTI integration so that it can talk to the great books of our LMS? I didn't talk about it in any nerdy detail because uh, that's only through. part of the audience may be interested. Yeah. But yes, um, that's the that sixth principle, working inside and outside of LMSs. We have a working LTI piece right now. So if you wanted to, you could take your text, this Portuguese text, it would take me two clicks, I could bring it into Canvas, and all of those chapters would appear as modules in the learning management system very quickly. Would it pass scores? Um, <coughs> kind of, yeah, and that's, the, the project that we're working on, the real ambitious piece, Margin, yeah. is um, I don't want to just use LTI, there's a new uh, specification that's called Caliper Analytics, oh, yeah. which will contain a full panoply of interactive details about a thing. We have a bid out for someone to help instrumentalize this so that it can produce like full-on engagement statements and a really broad panel of analytic information for all of the books. And we hope that's going to be coming in six months or so. Yeah. Talk. Maybe a dangerous question. Is this on the radar of Unison at all? Yes. So I brought it to Unison's attention. I told them what we were doing, and we pitched it to them. And Unison has now decided they're going to make this a core offering for all of their campuses. Um, there's three campuses right now that they've installed the first instance of Pressbooks. We're one of them, um, and they're going to give us a production site because we want to, or at least I want to do more ambitious things than the other Unison partners. But this is going to be, this publishing environment, it's planned to be something that Unison offers to all of its member campuses because of what we're doing and what a couple other campuses are doing. So, yeah, I think that's a sustainable way to grow something. <laughs> Unison is going to be powerful. Yeah. Any other questions for me before you start uh, digging in? Yeah, Katrina. Sure. Yeah. So in this case, the uh, the university owns the copyright <coughs> of this material. The board of regents owns it, and the copy the whole, the owners of this intellectual content decided that they wanted to openly license it, and so they did. And so the Portuguese text will be openly licensed, and it's on the web right now. It's publicly available, and I uh, really hope that it will continue to be so. They may have some kind of financialization or like a monet, I don't know, monetizing, I don't like using that word, but they're probably planning to monetize this in some way if they sell to other campuses. I think what I'm recommending that they do is they produce a set of learning or quizzing activities. They would sell that as like a five or $10 add-on, like a teacher's edition kind of thing. But the core learning object should be free for anybody who wants to learn language. So there's a, there's a bunch of people are in discussion about how they want to uh, make money from this. The tool allows you to sell your copies. Um, the tool builder encourages you not to sell them, but that's just a philosophical difference. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get in and start playing around with it so they can get better hands-on uh, experience with it. Um, we have a couple of different options here. We can start off just to see what it looks like and to do that um, on your activity sheet you can go to this and, uh, we're going to go to EPEX, actually, is the one we want to go to. But. No, I was going to say the teaching with technology. Just oh, just to see go, the text. Okay. Just if they want to go see what that looked like, um, yeah, it would be a different. This is not the tool that we're going to be working on, but it's another instance of the tool. This is our development version. But if you wanted to see what this looks like and, and have some hands-on experience with the textbook itself, then that teaching with technology on the, on, the, on, the, on the first thing gives you a chance to go through this. And you can go read through it, click on the read button. There's all kinds of fun stuff here. Um, if you ever need to go back to the home, click on teaching with 
technology. And on the bottom here, you've got a table of contents. Each one of these is a link. So for example, if you wanted to see how it opens up a YouTube video, the nature of multimedia. Far left column. Far left column. If any of you know David Mackesite, my coworker, he made a little video here that we've embedded Very in. Very intense, David. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can do that with, to see an audio podcast if you go to Active Learning Mindsets. And so anyway, we can go and take a few minutes to explore. If you don't want to explore or you're already familiar with this, go ahead and log in. You should have gotten an email if you signed up by 4 o'clock yesterday for this session. You should have gotten an email from New LSS eText user with your username with a password and a link to the um, eText LSS that was submitted to you. And that is a book that we are going to work on collaboratively and make today. If you didn't get that link and you want to log in, we created a bunch of guest accounts. Um, and the information for those is on the, okay. on the activity sheet. Um, it's the second little, can I borrow this one? It's the second little easy task here. The, the logins are guest one through, guest 20. Guest through 20. And then the passwords are password one through password 20. Um, it, and the S's are hand dollar hand signs. Gonna, yeah, can you raise your hand if you're going to use one of those guest ones just so we don't have two people logging in as guest one? I, okay, are, so, I already logged in as guest one. So, so you're guest 20. Okay, do you guys want to claim a number? 17. 17? 12. 12. Perfect. Okay. We just don't want everybody trying to log in. Do you think I made 20 of these accounts? Thank yeah. you. Guys. Good thing. <sighs> Thanks for doing that. How many of you already use WordPress? So if you start working in this, you'll notice that it's very familiar to you that who've already used WordPress. Uh, WordPress for a content management system logger, logging software, very easy to use compared to many of the other ones out there. So it's a, there'll be a lot of stuff that's very intuitive about that. Some of it's not intuitive, and so we have this very didactic worksheet for you to work through. So feel free to do that. Talk amongst yourself. For the next couple minutes, I'm going to start with everyone. Looks like Amy's adding a lot back. Is our math wizard here? Oh, Amy was playing on the flat test. That's who it was. Yay, math. Yay, math. Look at these problems. It does a good job of showing that. <laughs> it's the chapter called My Part. Woo! <laughs> so, you know. We had fun playing with this yesterday. <laughs> Still, can those HP5 elements... H5P? Yeah. The H5P be... Do they have to go into WordPress? No, they can live anywhere. Yeah, it's really fun. But you have to, well, it's, you we need it that to be installed in an authoring Something. environment, which it, they have to be authored, I think, essentially in Drupal or in WordPress. But once they're made, you can get an export link or an embed link that goes anywhere. So that's if you want to create your own H5P interactivity? If you have an H5P that has been made, oh, but you then want you could put it anywhere. It. You could publish it anywhere. Oh, nice. Including your own non-open author WordPress blog. Mm -hmm. You want to quiz people on your blog entry. Yeah. I do that all the time. <laughs> I thought it was interesting how audio, HP5, HP5P, um, they need to come up with a better name. <laughs> that, that's how you put the audio in, not through an embedded embed code, I mean, although you can do an embed code as well. Not, we didn't do it here at but, but you can. You could probably insert audio that way, yeah. It, it was a uh, good add Yeah. yeah. It has a whole. Mm -hmm. You should have automatic player as such. We don't want to recommend people with that uh, host and media. I or media through this. We want to do it first. Oh, right. Some okay. Look on mine, you'll see an embedded culture video. Okay. Oh, nice. Mm. That's what we want people to do for the media. Yeah. So we're going to save delivery. that for another day. Yeah. <laughs> video delivery. Those are Yeah. Okay. Or, I mean, I 
think it ought to be hosted some other place that does that. Can I take over there? But how do I pay what I get out of So if you go to view at the top, uh, you can check here. And that should take you out of there. So what okay, do you Try again, John. Do you take over and then you're editing and <coughs> you like get knocked out? He can still view it, he just can't. He's going to see a little screen like, it says you can't edit this, and then he could go uh, back in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kick me out, so go for it. You could do it. All right. I'll uh, so that's not interesting. interesting. It worked for me. Interesting. There might be something weird where I was editing it and stuff like that. Or is it a video? Is it open after you've given permission to the video? It's not that John would have. Once the video is embedded, the permissions don't matter anymore. Yeah, it's all that's the such key. So you want to do that for video, but like images? We do it just fine. Images are fine to just put in there. Why is it that you want to do that? I have one from, I mean, I embedded one straight from YouTube. And that's fine, that's fine. Okay. Embedding, what, I, what I'm saying is that when you're using uh, media that is of significant size, don't upload it to the WordPress oh, library. You should. Hosted. It should be hosted at some media streaming location, and that's why we have. That's the reason that we have Kaltura as a campus media streaming solution. Host your media there and embed it into the site instead of because if you were to host it, if you were to embed it to your WordPress site, anytime you export it, that site it's going to make a large copy of that media, um, and it's going to. I mean, we don't need to clog up our storage space with people's media if there's another place for media to live. That's the ideal. I thought it was really interesting with this tool that there's several places to, like, you could add stuff here, you could add stuff here, you know, so there's lots of ways to do it. Even the, these things over here, if you click on it, it expands it this way, but you could also hit things and a side menu pops out. So there's just, as we were putting together the sheet, it's like, which one should we have them do? Because there's so many ways of doing the same thing. So it was kind of a pick one, and yeah. and it may be confusing if they see other ways. But I think I think there is a, probably a higher cognitive load there. That's a user experience question. I think they also tried to put the buttons where they thought people might expect to find them. Or right. Them, so. Yeah, because I looked for I found export on the left. shows up on the web is anything that is 
listed as published. Okay. And if the book is public and the chapter is published, that will show up on the web. If you set it to private, that pulls it off from the web. The export controls when you take your text and encapsulate it in some kind of format from that export menu over here, that's helping you decide what gets included in the export. Okay. And so those would be something that has a kind of encapsulated format. But uh, that's a, there's a kind of a fine distinction there, and we can do more to explain that for the advanced users. Uh, so I think, Colin, I think part of your question is about where can you see the book? And you're talking about, and this is a question that I had yesterday as we were playing with this, like, if I want to take my, my text and go somewhere with it, that's where you would use the export function. The, but publication, right, is sort of a different thing. And like, right now, the stuff that you've just been playing around with, it's already live in this book. So John's gonna just hit the read button down here and just click through, and you're gonna see that like, these little chapters, just if you go to table of contents, so this is live, right now, and your stuff that you've just been making is already showing up live right now. So yeah. it's been published, but it hasn't been exported in a chunk to take somewhere else. Correct. But, it, but, it's, but it's usable if, right now. If you but don't want it to show up here, you can either save your thing as a draft rather than publishing, or change it from published to private or password protected, so that it won't be accessible unless you're an admin of the book. That's, you can control publication status in a couple of granular ways. And then as Margaret was saying, the export is encapsulating the whole text into some other wrapper. And you can also, you decide what gets included in the export by taking that export box on the right. So any questions? Yes, John. How do I embed, can you do the YouTube video embed? Sure. Um, if you want to embed video or media from another place, um, there's a couple of ways that you can do it, but the easiest is to go to YouTube, to click the share button, and get the embed sure. link, then come into your Pressbooks, click on your edit tab, mm -hmm. and there's two, there's two editors, there's visual and there's text. Mm -hmm. Click on the text tab, okay. and paste your embed code, okay. and then it's embedded. And it'll be the code with the iframe, da da da. The thing that WordPress allows you to do that's even simpler though, is just get the URL of your video mm -hmm. and paste it into your visual editor. Yeah. And YouTube is, uh, WordPress is smart and it says, oh, this is a YouTube video, and it does the embed stuff behind the scenes. So that's, that's what I would recommend, but. Um, so does that have to be in the text side as well, or can that nope, be that, on the that side? the visual editor. So just in the visual just side. Just go grab the YouTube link. There's the YouTube link, <laughs> click update. Or just preview changes, or click enter, and then. New chapter. There it is. Oh my gosh. So if you wanted to change the size of it, that would be where you could view that code. Yes, or you would do it through the CSS that controls the iframe style. Okay. Like if you wanted it to be uniform. The, the way that sizes you control, control generally happen once you start playing. So when you click play, you'll see your options, your size options here. So you make it full screen. How, how could I use this um, for that? Yes. Um, and so one of the format features that I liked about iBooks is that it had pop-ups in it, which is not possible with this. Oh, what kind of pop-ups are you hoping to produce? Um, you have a word on in your text that is a vocabulary. Oh, like a mouse over. So, yeah, you so you it. hover over it or click on it and get a pop up that defines that term. Does that be mark the words? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, Teach me how. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I can. I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, but yes, you could do it by 
you, what you basically do, you, you would define a link, have it open in a new tab or a new window, and then have whatever the link points to be a web page or something. So, um, it's kind of, that's very old school. Very but you can also do like alt text in the HTML5, right? Yeah. Is it just, you can, if you have a mouse over, the mouse over effect yeah. happens if you have a link. If you define the title of the link, that's what will display in the mouse over. Oh, really? So, so you can then you can put on a link and open a window and just mouse over it. You can still see the definition. You'll see, you will see on a mouse over tool tip is what it's called. Yeah. Whatever the title of the link is, that's what displays according to the browser. Yeah, totally. The problem with that kind of behavior though is that if you're doing it on uh, a device that doesn't have any mouse. There's no hover effect. So, oh yeah. I'm touching my iPad, I never get the hover yeah. behavior. I could do it from a single click and then it appears and then two clicks and it opens the link. But, so my, my general advice is I would recommend almost any author against doing open and new window type effects in their book. This is a principle of uh, responsive design. But I will support you in whatever you decide to do. But before I teach you how to do it, I want to have a conversation about whether that's the best decision. Well, um, what would you recommend then for um, for teaching vocabulary in textbooks? Then, yeah. just as a broad question. Um, How did you do that? In the, are, are there any? Did you do that? In, in so they simply presented the one language translation terms next to it without any links or grouping. If you wanted to do some testing or some prep quizzing. There is an H5P activity that are flashcards, just two-sided flashcards. So there's a whole bunch of, you could build very simple, a set of rotating flashcards or something like that. That would be a kind of interactive activity. There are lots and lots of ways that you could, you could do the vocabulary. Um, and that's something you probably want to look at and decide what the particular instruction needs are and what the best way to do it. But I think pop-ups are not mm -hmm. the worst. They're just not always the best. But I sort of have to know this. So you're not going to tell us how to do the help sort of thing? Sure, absolutely. Do that? So right now we don't, what this tool doesn't have is the insert stuff button yeah, that we're, we're used yeah, to in yeah. D2L and Canvas. Mm -hmm. I would love for that to be a feature of the authoring environment. Mm -hmm. It's not here yet and we haven't done the counter integration. But right now, if you go to mediaspace.wist.edu and look at your library, yeah. you'll find a little share or embed button there. The method I just described for the YouTube, okay. you get your iframe, paste and it in, right in there. and then okay. that's okay. Okay. Cool. Right. What I would love to have happen would be either an insert step button, mm -hmm. or you know how we recognize the smart link for YouTube? Yeah. We do a recognize the smart yeah. link for Kaltura links, and yeah. that would be yeah. cool. that video. So neither of those things are close yet. We haven't started integrating those, but down the road. Oh, just, I think I just noticed the end concept chart there. So another question. It is. How can I get like if I want to start playing yeah, I want to like, yeah, try to I'm gonna have to drop you now so I have the idea to work on this like some these tests for this class this summer and I would love to just have it so I can start playing around a little bit. Perfect. So anytime you're ready to work with you. Yeah. Oh could I use CSCR when I was there too? Um, I think this can replace a lot and of things. I think this can because what I'm using CSCR for is not And eventually we can try so to talk about that. the assessments as being formed if I'm not being integrated. There's going to eventually be a way to... Kind of. Yeah. That's the ultimate plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do think... I don't want this well, tool to replace... I'll try it. Okay. I don't, yeah. This is not a guarantee. Right. 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 Hey, John, did you try embedding a Google Map? No, I did not try Okay, you just put it on the list as a possible thing that might be done. Because that's very interesting to... Like this right. is going to be the possibility of that is very interesting. There was no there's no you can't oh, the integrity. <laughs> Talk about oh, so I wasn't sure if you were saying that. Oh, sure. What do you think? Uh, possibility? So try it. See what happens. Yeah. This is really is it harder, easier yeah. yeah. than you thought? Because I wonder if it even needs to be out. Oh, yeah. What's the hard part? What's the easy part? That's how I was. The navigation. My head's kind of. So yeah, there's the parts of the, we have parts, so that'd be like section one, section yeah, two, yeah. section three, and under each of those is the chapters. That was hard for me, actually, for a little yeah, while. Yeah, it's not intuitive to me right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I just ask a stupid question by anyone? How do you insert an image into this document? Like, 
I, from my image library on my You upload media. I do? You add, 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 add media to each? Yeah. Oh, that, I can do that for a picture and image? You just drag your file over? If we have any files, oh. somebody's already inserted a picture of their dog. Oh. This dog would appear. <laughs> you can add a caption. Okay. It's really important if you care about accessibility to add all text. And this is what the text that appears if someone has a visual impairment or they're using a browser which does not display images. This is the alternative text. So this is like picture of puppies. So I describe it for a non-sighted user. And then I would say <coughs> oval shaped image of two dogs. Insert into post and there's my image. And if you click on that image, you can make multiple more changes under the edit there, the size and the center or left or right have a uh, text graph, things like that. So it's a little sad that that's on my computer. But it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sign of heaven. It's child. It's a sign of heaven. There's other versions where I made it sepia and upgrade oh, so they look, <laughs> they look like now, 19th century dogs. Oh, 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 now I'm leaving because you know, <laughs> you've shamed them out. <laughs> <laughs> See y'all later. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Other thoughts, questions? Um, uh, pronunciation. How do you manage pronunciation? Great. I'll show you what we're doing with Portuguese. Um, this is one of the reasons why it's so important for this to be an audio, and to and contain audio. At the end of each lesson, there is a dialogue activity. And here's what happens when you finish your first lesson. I'm sorry for the buzz, but. Sorry, it's not buzzing. So there, we have an audio pronunciation here. And what we're doing this semester is every vocabulary word in the text has been recorded by a native Brazilian speaker. We're producing thousands of tiny audio files, and those will appear next to each vocabulary word through the text. So that's a labor intensive, and it is kind of a slightly, uh, well, it's, it's hard to do, and it takes some time. But we have the resources in our lab. There's an audio studio where people come and record. Some graduate students have recorded all the audio, and now they're just producing very small files. So when you listen or hear an audio or read an audio or when you read a vocabulary word, you'll be able to press play and hear the word said twice by native speaker. And they're going to do that throughout the book. Um, so that's how they're handling pronunciation for language learning. It's much more labor intensive than the good old standard, right? But, I mean, in this case, they <coughs> produced a ton of audio and it's just been available as like paratext. So you had to go to the learning lab and check out the CDs or you had to go online and listen to the audio, but it wasn't tightly integrated with the text. And what we're doing is taking the existing audio and just more tightly integrating it. Sid, you had a question. Um, yeah, this was the first I've heard of HP5. H5P? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how expert I am in it. Um, and it looks, just playing around, it looks like a little content creation yeah. service. Is this something? I love Where H5P and uh, yeah. It's a free, is it a free service? It is, it's, it's open source software. H5P was built I think four or five years ago initially. There was a group of people uh, hired by the Norwegian government. There's a guy and his, there's a company in Tromsø, Norway, which is north of the Arctic Circle, for those of you who are geography about. Uh, I, the kind of lead developer is a man named Svein Tor Griffith, and he and I have talked a little bit. Really cool guy. And what it is is it's a set of you can create a bunch of these interactive modules that produce H HTML5 output. And HTML5 is the kind of standard language that's read by web browsers. It's a broadly accessible web language. And so you make these really cool interactive activities. It doesn't use Flash. It doesn't use the stuff that breaks on Apple devices or other mobile <laughs> devices. And um, it's built to do a bunch of educational learning activities. So the Norwegian government paid for this to be developed for educational purposes in the Norwegian education system. And because they're progressive thinking and they care about education, they decided that it would be an openly so openly licensed open source project. And so they've been working on this, developing it, and, and producing new releases. Those are the people that I am going to most likely be contracting with to help uh, build the Caliper Analytics specification for the H5P tool. And so I've had very good interactions with them, and they're, uh, 
I think, uh, good people with good intentions. So how, how long before this turns into a case scenario type tool? So I think right now it is a case scenario type tool. My feeling is that it uh, can do almost everything the case scenario critical reader can do and many things it can do better. Um, and, it's, and it's all the things that case scenario builder isn't. So I don't want to, I mean, I'm in a sort of hostile audience because it's a do it built tool that I'm <laughs> talking about. But, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's one of the things I had in mind as well with this yeah. because we have a lot of users of the case scenario critical reader tool and it's not web based. It only works in one LMS. It's not going to work in the new LMS. It's not LTI. So there's all these pieces that are very worrying about the future of that. And I hope that this would be able to do many of those things and replace it. So, yeah. Is the LaTeX support using MathJax, or what's yeah. behind that? Um, yes, kind of. They're, they're, they're MathJax is, is the engine that feels part of it. I don't know all the specifics. There's a man named Brad Payne at the University of British Columbia. British Columbia built the, another plugin that does textbook publishing here, and he wrote the engine that does the LaTeX translation. So I, I don't know all the finer points. I'm not a mathematician myself, but I could send you the link for his plugin and his documentation if you're curious. Okay. Yeah. We are out of time, and I want to be respectful of that. Um, however, we do have room till 10 o'clock, so if you need to leave now, I just wanted to remind you, um, please fill out these evaluations. They really help us figure out what to do better um, and what we can change and what we should keep on doing. Um, thank you for coming. Help me thank you.